My name is Rachel Friedman and I am the owner president of A Better Pet LLC and I provide uh, training and product services for dogs. Hi, my name is Sarah Householder and this is my service dog, Scout. Scout is an English Springer Spaniel. She's a psychiatric service dog and she also does migraine alert. So what I specifically like about Scout is this incredible enthusiasm and energy for going and doing stuff. I love that balance of the dog who will hang out with you and just keep you cozy and the dog who says, yes, let's go have another adventure. I'm ready. So I think that for Sarah, partnering her with Scout uh, was partnering her with a confident, outgoing, athletic, charismatic, kind of funny, character that would get her out of her comfort zone and shows her that it actually um, can be fun. A really good example is if you wake up and you might not be feeling well, either emotionally or physically or both, and it's kind of gray and gross out, you could say, oh, I'm just going to like roll the covers on me and go back to sleep. When you have a young athletic dog who needs to go out and pee and poop and run around, you can't do that. And so you get up, maybe begrudgingly at first, and then you get your stuff on because it's winter when you have a puppy. And you go out and you do stuff and you realize, hey, you know, I can enjoy the beauty of the day and see it through her eyes and see how cool everything is. And then before long, you know, the, the, the depression might lift a little bit, the anxiety might dissipate a little bit, and you're out and doing stuff you didn't imagine that you might be able to go out and do. So that, I think, is what makes her a really good partner for Sarah. During my freshman year of college, I was really struggling with my mental health. Um, I went to the counseling center at my school and I ended up getting diagnosed with a couple of mental illnesses, the main one being anxiety. And my anxiety was causing distress in my everyday life. It was making every day a bad day. And I had trouble getting out of bed to go to class. I would miss work often. I would miss class often. And then I started looking into service dogs, psychiatric service dogs. And that's what I decided was really going to be the best thing for me. But I was too hesitant to jump on it right away because I was afraid of people judging me and not being supportive of my decision. So I ended up doing six months worth of research before I finally committed to the idea of getting Scout to be my psychiatric service dog. Rachel is super knowledgeable about dog training. She has the answer in all different types of situations and her training style is very positive. There's no violence. And so I picked her and I picked a better pet because I thought her training style was perfect. Since Rachel lives in Cleveland, Ohio, and I live in Rochester, New York, while I'm going to school, we came to the agreement that Rachel would keep Scout and board and train her at her house for three months, and then Scout would be transitioned to me for three months, and we would do distance learning. And Rachel already had a breeder picked out, she already had Scout picked out, so all she had to do was go to the airport and pick Scout up, and then that was the beginning of the three months with Rachel. When I find breeders, I'm not as interested in where they are geographically, if they can ship dogs or I can physically go get the dog. Um, I'm looking for good breeders of good dogs. So, you know, if you're gonna put this kind of time and uh, money into an, an investment of a relationship that can last 10 to 15 years, I think it's important to find the right make and model. But when she arrived at the airport, she was totally covered in feces and urine from the stress and, of the travel. And I was a little bit um, concerned because she seemed kind of traumatized by it, but um, it was what it was. So I sort of plugged my nose and drove her home and I immediately threw her in the sink because she was a little puppy then. And I gave her a really quick bath and uh, she just completely bounced back and became this amazingly wonderful dog. And as it happened, um, I acquired this dog shortly before I had to go to Han Hancock, New York to pick my daughter up from this performing arts camp that she's been going to. And I got permission from the director of the camp to bring her in the camp. But I thought being exposed to hundreds of teenage children squealing at her would be a really good socialization outing for her. 
And not only was she awesome and got tons and tons and tons and tons of exposure and socialization and handling and distractions, etc., cetera, um, but she actually also provided a really great service for these kids because it was the end of camp when it was time for them to leave this amazingly wonderful place and go back to their real worlds with their families and it's a very emotionally stressful time. I think for your service with the puppies, it just brings joy and, and you know, it, 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 I feel like it brings the, the campus together and, and the counselors together and, and you know, it stopped a lot of tears, it really has. So that's kind of a cool side benefit. Not only does the dog provide service dog function for their owner, but they provide a lot of help for the owner's contacts, whether they're friends or acquaintances or people they come across. The dog just basically makes people feel better, and that's really cool too. The first time I met Scout was over Labor Day weekend when I got to keep her overnight for a stay. And then I didn't get to see her again until the next month when Rachel went on vacation for two weeks and I brought Scout up to my apartment with me. So during the first week of Scout's stay with me, she was going to stay home while I went to class and during the second week she was going to come to class with me. But during the first week when I would leave her alone, she could hear my neighbors and she would bark at them the whole time I was gone. And one day I came home to a note on my door complaining about her barking and I didn't know what to do. So I reached out to Rachel and she told me to leave candy for my neighbors. And so I did that. And she also suggested that I turn a radio on for Scout and leave her different things to do in her crate, like bully sticks and cons with frozen food in them. So I tried all of that and after that, there wasn't a problem with the barking. All of those things resolved it. So during the second week of Scout's stay, it was arranged between the director of the Disability Services Office at my school and Rachel and myself that Scout would be allowed to go to classes with me. Rachel suggested that before I take Scout to class, I take her in to meet the director of the Disability Services Office. And when I did, she looked at Scout changed her mind and told me no, I was not allowed to bring Scout to class with me. Hearing her tell me no was really hurtful and disheartening, but I fought for my right to bring Scout to class and it's since been resolved. It wasn't easy for me to fight for my right to bring Scout to class, but it was worth the time and effort. I also decided to take Scout to a mall with me while she was here. And while we were walking through the mall, a little kid ran up to us and got her all excited and the father wasn't doing anything, so I said to him, would you please get your son? And he did. And that was a really cool moment for me because I didn't know I was capable of doing that. Then, as we were leaving the mall, Scout squatted and peed all over the floor, and I was mortified. But we got it all cleaned up, and we left, and I was furious with her the whole way home. So between her barking and problems with the school and the mall situation, and not getting her to listen to me for two weeks, I was really overwhelmed. So when Rachel got in from her vacation, I was there with Scout to drop her off. And at this point, I was having second thoughts about having Scout as my service dog. During the month after that, I was really nervous about getting Scout back, especially because this time she was going to officially be mine. But when I got her back, her behavior was so much better and it really showed all of the work Rachel put in during that month. And it's been an unbelievable journey with Scout ever since. When I started this journey with Scout, I thought that what she would do for me would be very concrete. I thought that she would be trained to do things like deep pressure therapy for me when I got upset, but that's not how it is at all. It's really about my relationship with Scout. For her, every day is the best day ever. She's not worrying about other things, she's just living in the moment. And so by having her, I'm learning how to do the same. She's also been helping me learn how to deal with conflict, because sometimes when we're out in public, I have to tell people that they can't pet her or they have to get control of their kid. And learning how to do that has been helpful when I have to deal with conflict in my everyday life. There's a lot involved in having a psychiatric service dog, and I'm really glad that Rachel was there along the way to help me with everything. When I couldn't get Scout to focus on me, she suggested I hand feed Scout for three days to make her more aware of me. 
and when Scout's energy was too much for me to handle, she suggested more play with dogs so that Scout would be more calm later in the day. I really don't think I could have done this journey alone and I'm glad that Rachel has been there to help me with it all. Scout has helped me so much that my worst days now are comparable to my everyday life before having her. I can't imagine life without her anymore. I know there's more work to be done, but I can't wait to see where we are in the future.